and you're a parliamentary candidate mm -hmm. for Reform UK. So I saw a, a brilliant documentary of you and Anne Whittaker. Currently serving in the Army Reserves for PWRR. People say you're just a conspiracy theorist. Well, <laughs> I think the whole world uh, is getting fed up with that term. Let's call it a meeting of the elites. From the outside, yeah. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, do you know what, I've got to do something about this. Alex, no. How are we doing, fellas? Hello, guys. How are you doing? Thanks for having... I'd like to say thank you very much for having us on in what we're about to discuss, a very serious issue, mate. Thank you. Yes. Yes, it is. We've been trying to um, get this podcast together for, for a while now. And uh, uh, what we're going to talk about affects everybody, and it's all to do with... I say government shenanigans, taxpayers' yeah. money. Where the hell does it go? Who does it yeah. go to? And and it's not just that. How does it all fit in with a big scheme of how we're all just getting more and more enslaved? Mm. Um. So, no. How are you doing? Do you want to just introduce yourself and um, tell us a bit about your background and what what we're going to talk about today and why? Hi, Chris. Yeah, uh, as Alex said, thank you very much for having me on today. I really appreciate it. It's good, you know, good platform to get our message out there. Um, I'm currently a parliamentary candidate for Reform UK, um, and I've been researching, uh, doing a lot of research in relation to the family courts and the child maintenance service, um, which has kind of taken me down some pretty dark places, if I'm honest with you, Chris. Yes. Um, Currently serving in the Army Reserves for PWRR. Um, you know, what does that uh, stand for? No, what does that stand for? For those who don't know, that's a lot of words, letters. <laughs> yeah, Princess of Wales Royal Regiment. So she was our Colonel in Chief. Right. Obviously, before she sadly passed away. Yeah, are you doing a lot of reservist kind of stuff? Or how does it work? Um, I mean, currently at the moment, if I'm honest with you, Chris, um, it's quite frustrating because the work that I've been doing, you know, parliamentary wise has, has kind of taken up a lot of my time campaigning, um, you know, being on Nation Builder. It's not as glamorous as everybody sort of thinks it is. There's a lot of background work that's going on, constantly reading up on policies, current affairs, obviously spend a lot of time watching the news, such as GB News and stuff like that. Um, and I think I, I kind of share the same view as everybody else. We're all not sure what direction we're going in as a country. Yes. And um, that's why I was kind of quite keen, you know, to come on here today, talk about things because, you know, I've always said that when we were all earning a few pounds, we were all going on holidays we all had money in the bank. We all had money in our pocket. We always knew that there was corruption that was going on, but nobody really paid any attention to it because we were all leading our lives and we didn't really care. But now, every, all these decisions that are being uh, made in Westminster now, um, you know, they are decisions that are affecting all of our lives, you know, raising taxes, public services not wor working, NHS is in crisis. We have our country being invaded by, you know, illegal immigrants every day, predominantly Albanians. Wow. Um, you know, the country is in a very, very, very serious state at the moment. And, you know, we really need to start taking action you know, regarding what these politicians are doing, you know, at the ballot boxes. And this is, you know, reform's message. I know how do we know, how do we know reform's not just going to end up, though, a puppet government like all... I mean, there's a lot of... You know, I, 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 I would never vote simply because 
I know it's all controlled by. <laughs> you don't have to be Einstein to work out who the controllers are, and they've got their big club. We said this a lot lately, as the uh, wonderful comedian George Carlin said, it's a big club and you ain't in it, so get used to it. Um, so, you know, most of the public, they, they're not even aware of this agenda that's going on. Not even the oh, last, but- not even the last couple of years, where people were locked in their homes illegally and forced to, you know, undergo all kinds of um, untoward procedures. Can we say it, it, it's um? Sorry, not wishing to be start off on a negative note, but uh, wh- why? How are reform going to be any different? Well, I think reform are different in the way that we talk about things that the public want us to talk about. And any time that you speak to a parliamentary candidate or you speak or you hear from Richard Tice or our honorary president, Nigel Farage, we do speak about the topics that are very unpopular, Mm. you know, topics that are not covered in the mainstream media. The only reason why we know what we know about the illegal crossings that are going on in the channel is because of Nigel Farage and reform and yeah. GB news. The mainstream media would not cover this as to what's going on, as to why this is costing the British taxpayer um, over £7 million a day. And it makes me so angry, Chris. And I'm, you know, yeah. as a parliamentary candidate, should I say that it makes me angry? Politically, I shouldn't say that. But it does make me angry when I think that we've got over 11,500 veterans on our streets who are homeless guys i would say um this is why we've come to you chris i would say that the people and you, people would say you're just a conspiracy theorist well <laughs> i think the whole world uh, is getting fed up of that term because they're seeing the corruption firsthand they don't entirely understand what's going on but they under- they understand one thing they don't trust governments there is so much literally I'm going to say we word crap going on everywhere in government um it's people have had enough and if people really realize and this is the time where which is why I've become friendly with Noel I know Noel because I um I run an organization called the Bob Reef Foundation after my father to help parents go through the family courts and the, the there's a lot of corruption there you've got organized they've got the family courts themselves got social service services and you've got CAPCAS. And um, Noel's been a great help to a lot of my uh, people involved in it because of something called CMS, Child Maintenance Service. And we'll go into that in a, in a lot more detail in a minute. Well, I'll let Noel's my point of contact when I've got, um, when people have problems. There's, there's so much corruption. Um, and we need someone, obviously, I've got an affinity, he's an ex squaddy. Well, no, he's a He's, a, he's a currently serving squaddy, sorry. But more importantly, I'm so inspired by him because he's so articulate and he's running. He's like, How can a squaddy be a parliamentary candidate? He's actually brilliant. He knows his stuff. He cares and he's passionate, which is, as I, as you yourself, Chris, you joined to make the world a better place. You know, you believe in um, a warrior society and we are the warriors who have to try and protect it. I'm not saying we're, with Jesus Christ or anything, but for evil to exist, good men don't no- do nothing. There are so many suicides going on every day, and people are getting government are turning a blind eye, and they are complicit. And it's about time we find out what is going on. There's a lot of things that the public they, they don't trust the government, but it's, we have now got a short a torch with someone like Noel, which is why I brought him to you because it's so brilliant what he's got to show. Look, this is what's going on. And yeah. Yes, I congratulate you both and myself <laughs> for, for, you know, for giving a damn. Um, I, you know, my. Person- I know you're very passionate about veterans and the the the, uh, the crappy situation veterans end up in this country. It's horrendous because they lack of they do they do all their service, um, for the for the queen and well for king and country now. And then they end up with nothing. And I know how passionate you care. And if you understand, especially what's happening with all of the different companies, there's a company called Serco, 
which would I let Noel explain what they what they're doing. But they're destroying these these people who have served our country. It's not just them. It's it's it goes deeper and deeper. I'll, I'll let you talk a bit more now. You can tell me what what you think. Well, yeah, I mean, look, I think, I think, you know, we're having this podcast at the right time. And as I said, you know, we have over 45,000 illegal immigrants in hotels at the moment. We have over 11,500 veterans who are sleeping on our streets. You know, they, they would love to be fed. They would love to be watered. They'd love to be warm tonight. But no, we're giving that accommodation to people who have no right to be here. You know, somebody's got to ask the question, what is going on and why is it going on? And I think, uh, if just cut off now, I think we can all agree, all three of us, we're not anti helping people, helping immigrants. But I think we all agree when you're in an uh, aeroplane, it's going down. Where do you put the oxygen first? But Alex, they're not they're not immigrants, are they? Yeah. Because they've come here illegally. So there's nine channels available to come here and seek asylum, and they've chosen one to come here illegally. So they, you know. We cannot condone, as a country, we cannot condone, we can't encourage criminal behaviour. It's as simple as that. Yeah. 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 We have a Royal Navy, we have the Royal Marines, we have the military to defend our country, defend our shores, defend our constitution, defend our rights. Yeah, that's why you have a military. And we have people that we're encouraging, yes, by giving them £45 a week pocket money. They have uh, free meals laid on. They have all of these things. I know we're going off subject a little bit here, but the fact of the matter is, is that it will bring us into something a little bit later on when we do start talking about a corporation called Serco. Why Why is that happening? I mean, I, I know it's your podcast, Chris, but I'm generally angry and I don't understand why. All I can see is someone somewhere is making some money. Right, it's, well... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'll just chip in. I don't know if we want to get too much into the weeds at this stage about it, mate. Um, but it's an ag it's an agenda, Alex. It's a gen agenda that goes back hundreds of years. Uh, I mean, and it's a uh, let's call it a meeting of the elites. So you had 400 years ago, you had the Rothschilds come together with a group called the uh, Bavarian Illuminati, who were a kind of esoteric organization run along the similar lines to the uh, to, to the old school Masons. I'm not talking about the Masons that we have these days who are harmless and, and uh, uh, talking talking. Very, very old institutions here, ones that go back to ancient Babylon. They, they, they use a language that most people won't understand. They use symbolism. Um, and they also uh, I mean, allegedly come together with a, a cult called the Sabbatean Fra uh, Frankists, who were basically, they came out of, um, of the Middle East. And their thing was, like, if you can't be good be bad but like be really bad be be depraved right which which is why you see all this horrible stuff around children in in oh. you know n not just the stuff that's coming up with all this you know pizza stuff um but also you you see you know everything's inappropriate now one minute you got Hannah Montana encouraging you, you know children girls to 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 follow her and the next thing hollywood snapping their fingers and they're changing that into this kind of bloody uh, uh, uh i can't even think of the word but you you get what i'm saying you know this sexual monster <laughs> and 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 like I say, going back to your original point, you know, this isn't this isn't a gender. It go this this is like we're talking sixteen sixty six, um, and they their aims are to destroy family. That's like one thing. Their aims are to destroy uh, community. Their aims are to control the financial system, which now we're we're talking about moving into digital currency. You know, can programmable digital currencies, um, sorry, currencies. Um, 
and we could go on on and on but one of their mo's and you guys have picked up on it is the the mass illegal immigration why because they want if you want to gain a control of the planet you need to destroy the kind of bastions of culture of which europe historically has has been at the uh, at the forefront and if you can bring families into europe um uh, in this massive way that we're uh, this massive illegal uh, immigration that we're seeing and these families once they get into the country and once they get right to remain they can then apply to the red cross to have all their families sent across yeah, this is yeah. what people don't see they're like yeah they're, they're all yeah. fighting aged males it's got nothing to do with fighting although that is also another angle is that do, coming it's to do with the fact that once these young men get here they can apply to the red cross and the red cross can bring all their family across this could be 17 people right now just 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 bear with me what's yeah, that going to do in yeah. terms of numbers and percentages when your typical let's just say british or english family has like one child now possibly two you know it's the kind of average and yet you've got uh uh foreign nationals coming in that might have you know eight eight children nine ten etc 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 well our culture is going to go like that and the disintegration co of culture is going to you know is going to go through the roof it's a bit like tommy uh says when he well, got yeah uh no need for names but you know uh, um when he grew up there was one mosque in his town yeah and now there's 60. it's it and the, sorry the reason i'm going in at this angle fellas is people don't understand this agenda they won't understand why the government go along with it because the government are all controlled by the agenda it's very very powerful they own hollywood they own the music industry um they control all the com sort of corporations that we're probably going to talk about today and it's not a, a pleasant agenda it's not you know um it's you know it's not pleasant it's not in our Chris, interest everything you said you're preaching to the converted i'm i'm looking to know um for some hope no what can we do what's what well let's talk about what's going on at the moment with regards to what chris just said and what we can do about it which yeah, is why I mean, I'm... And, I, and i just chip in another thing nigel offered to come on the show right but like i don't really see what's the point if he's just he's just he's not calling out the controllers like i'm doing now <laughs> no it, it, it it's fine slamming the government and slamming the government and slamming the government and then slamming the government as we've seen for two and a half years by you know um let's just say the f a few celebrities that speak out but if they don't point out that that behind this is a big club and mm. as george said we ain't in, in it right we're gonna we're chasing our tails fellas you know we're chasing our tails and uh um you can vote in a new political party and what's going to happen is because people operate out their egos, which is easily controllable and people are fallible. So they've got all their, you know, backdoors to blackmail or bribery or, or greed or corruption, because you might start a charity. I don't know for homeless veterans. Great. Cause you're a good person. Suddenly when you've got 300,000 pound coming into your bank account every month, that token salary is going to pay yourself of you know twelve thousand pound a year very tempting then isn't it to whack that one up to 30 grand and then well hang on i am the direct well i should be on two hundred thousand a month because that's what my count do, do you see how this works it's 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 called the spiritual battle it's the fact that we live in a in a matrix and it's a matrix of control because most people in it have never raised their spiritual consciousness above that of the level where you're just controllable 
you know, where you you believe what you see on the telly, you operate out of greed, you you um uh, you 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 you're control to your animal sort of um base instincts and desires and and we talk about this a lot on the podcast we we it's sort of become quite quite a main theme of what we talk about because if we don't there isn't any hope we just uh, it's like war when are people going to understand it's all controlled when 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 are people going to be honest about the first world war the second world war who were the, the perpetrators behind it how did they kid people into oh we've all got to go to war with this country or that country uh the same with the last 20 years same thing again you know yeah. you have you have an event off the back of it you you blame these bad guys and boom next thing you know you pull out of that region leaving it smashed to smithereens and let and yet leaving all your military hardware there billions <laughs> upon <laughs> billions of pounds worth and what Madness. happens what happens the chinese walk in and go oh Hello, Mr. Uh, T people. Those Americans, they were the bad guys, weren't they? But we're here to do business. Oh, can we have all your, your lithium for our Belt and Road Initiative, our super highway between China and Europe, which is further going to enslave people? Oh, and by the way, all the countries on this super highway, if they want to be involved, we'll mortgage to them, right? This is the Chinese, although it's not Chinese people. It's the big club that control everything. So say a country like, I don't know, uh, arbitrarily Turkmenistan wants to get involved with a Belt and Road. Yeah, they can get involved because China will mortgage them, 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 uh, them to it. And then guess what happens when they default on the payment? Then they're susceptible to, OK, you haven't made your payment this month. Right. What do we want from your country? What reserves have you got? Uh, what can we you know, bribe your or blackmail your corrupt ministers because everyone's in the ego. They're not spiritual. You know, Alex, I know this makes sense to you. You know, life is about love yeah. and peace and kindness. And and it's uh and people won't call out these controllers, no, you know. They won't they won't call out this big club because they're all afraid of their own job positions, then their own two hundred K a year. Of which, incidentally, I don't make nothing even remotely like that. Maybe, maybe two, not two hundred k a year. I might make two k a year, um, but you know, I'm free. That's it. You know, I'm free, and I speak my truth, um, and I speak my truth. So, and and you know, ha have they got a grip on it? Well, look at look at the companies like Serco. You know, Serco. Well, we'll come on to that. But look at the big pharmaceutical industry that have just been given a blank check to write whatever the hell or a blank mandate, rather, to write whatever the hell they want. Now for babies, for crying out loud. Over something that the government's office of national statistics, let's not say any of the we don't need to say any of the words here. Everyone knows what we're talking about, fellas, right? Over that the that our very own office of national statistics said that under the age of 35 uh, it's something ridiculous like only 50 people fucking died this is how powerful uh how, you know what a stranglehold they have on the on the planet and like i say this the the the, the only way we'll get out of it won't be by fighting because all fighting will do was remove these idiots and j just put fresh idiots in there or people that are great for the first three months. And then suddenly the 200,000 pound salaries appear and the, the, Oh, by the way, we got some photos of you doing some stuff you shouldn't have done with a, uh, some body inappropriate. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, what is it you want me to do again? Yeah. Give me the, yeah, I'll sign that and I'll sign that and I'll sign that and I'll sign that. And we get, we get the same perpetuation of of the pro of the problem. Um, so, sorry, fellas, we I, I'm, I'm, I didn't want to was going to save this to the end, but the, the, you know this it it is unfair. It's awfully unfair. 
don't be sorry. It's, you it's know, what we both think. It's what we both think. Well, I'd speak for myself. It's what I think. Um, yeah. Noel's a bit more, um, I don't know how to put it. Traditional? Yeah. Yeah. He, he likes to keep to the point. Um, whereas I, I'm like you, Chris. I go off from one. and um, But it's everything you say, I wholeheartedly agree with. But, but that, I, the th this say, is the point. That's why this is the point. Human um, nature is, it, it's, it, I understand people have the best will and intention in the world and then human nature, temptation creeps in. A good soul all of a sudden can, and you see it time and time again. Um, that's sort of Margaret Thatcher. I just sent something to Knowles the other day, which she's talking a great speech about how she, um, power corrupts people. We don't want, you don't want the government to rule you. The people can, can sort their own problems out. And, um, we're also, we're coming and step in if we have to. And she's she was talking such fabulous ideas. And then the guys on on one of our groups, which is about CMS, child maintenance service, was saying, Well, actually, au contraire, Alex, Margaret Thatcher, although she said all those wonderful things, is responsible for a lot of terrible things which are going on to this day because of her. Regarding the child maintenance service. So maybe you can throw a bit more light on that, Noel. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously we all know that there's an organisation such as the Child Maintenance Service that exists. And the Child Maintenance Service, for those that don't know who they are, uh, they took over from the Child Support Agency. The Child Support Agency, sorry, agency was closed down in 2012 um, as a result of uh, the, the, the highest volume of complaints um, you know, there there was a lot of problems with the child support agency. Child maintenance service took over, and um, for the better for the better word, it's the same pig, just different lipstick. That's pretty much it. Yeah. But they've got a whole host more of um, enforcement powers than what the child support agency had. So, I mean, this might be alarming. Um, you know, why is that a problem? Why why is it? Why? Why shouldn't we enforce accountability? If, if a dad, accountability. If, if a parent isn't um, paying, then surely they should pay for their children. Um, I mean, look, I, I get asked this question an awful lot, and if we want to get kind of like straight straight to the point, you know, yeah. I would always say to people, well, you shouldn't have children if you can't afford them. Yeah, I mean that that is the the harsh reality. We're, we've become this society where we've become a money for nothing society. We've become a society where we want to blame everybody else for our mistakes. You know, unfortunately, um, you know, people do make mistakes. Yeah. We, you know, I've made mistakes. You've made mistakes. Alex. We've all made mistakes, you know, but when you keep repeating those mistakes is when it's a problem. And when you see, you know, four, five, six children, that are born by different fathers. You know, we've got a, a, a you know, we've got a, a, a social breakdown. That's what we've got. We've got a social breakdown because it's okay. I can just keep having children because every everybody else is going to pay for them, and that's just not acceptable in 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 any society. So the child maintenance service, and the reason why I'm on here today, Chris, is mm. uh, my research has taken me down uh, the road of how many service people are affected by the calculations of the child maintenance service and one of the astonishing things that i've seen with the cases that i've read and i've read a lot of cases of members of the armed forces is what's happening is is the child maintenance service are basing their calculations on operational pay and allowances and as you know you could be mobilized for four weeks. You could be mobilized for two months, three months, all depending on the nature of the operation. Mm. UKSF in particular, this applies to. And you would be horrified to see the amount of guys and girls who are at Paul and Hereford who are having massive problems with the child maintenance service because they've been assessed on their op pay and not their basic pay. Just for those who don't know, Paul and Hereford are major places for special forces in this country, correct? 
yeah, so we've obviously got Paul, which is where the special boat service where they where they operate from. And then Hereford, obviously, is where the SAS, well, when I say obviously, you know, it's obvious yeah. to us, but not to other yeah. people. So um, and one other thing, can you just explain? What's operational pay? What, what does, What's that about? Right. So op pay, you would receive uh, certain allowances. So, I mean, I wouldn't even call them benefits because it's not a benefit. It's it's an allowance that you're allowed. So if you're in like, danger. It, exactly. So you have right. things like hardship allowances. Um, the main one is LSA. That's your main right. one, which is your long separated allowance. So if you're away from your parent unit, <sighs> You might correct me on this, Chris, or you, I, I can't remember what it is. It might be 10 days. If you're away from your parent unit for more than 10 days, you're eligible for LSA pay. So LSA is something that you accumulate in days for all the operational days that you do, and they fall into different bands of payment. And it could be possibly as much, all depending whether your core army UKSF, I think it could be anything from SF about 20 forces. United Kingdom Special Forces. It could be anything from twenty-seven pounds to maybe uh, maybe about forty pounds a day extra. So if you look at that over a period of a month, yes, sir, that could be an extra two grand a month that you're yeah, getting. That you're getting in well operational pay. But the thing that I find really frustrating is that the CMS have laws on how they can calculate a parent's assessment. Sorry, their income. Sorry, that was completely wrong. Mm -hmm. They have laws that they have to follow and regulations on how they calculate um, a paying parent's income. And if a paying parent says, I'm not earning that, that's not a true reflection of what I'm earning, they are supposed to perform something called a mandatory reconsideration. And a mandatory reconsideration is where the tolerance threshold of their income is 25%. So if your income deviates by 25%, they are supposed to look at it and adjust the figures. Hmm. That's the law. That's what's written supposed, in law. You said supposed. Well, I say supposed because they never do. Uh, Hence the reason got why. Evidence and stats on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is the reason why, and I, and, and I mean, we, we've got a guy, and I, obviously I can't name him, um, who's come out of the SBS with severe psychological damage. And he actually turned around to me and said to me, do you know what, Noel? I would rather face the Taliban any day of the week than the DWP CMS. Wow. That came straight from his mouth. He said the psychological damage that they did. Now, there's a flip side to this coin because it's also in their regulations and it's also in the law that they are not allowed to pursue members of the armed forces who are mobilised on operations. They're not allowed to pursue reservists because they're on zero contract hours. They're not allowed to, mm. to um, pursue, I think, maybe army pensions. There, there's a certain aspect in there regarding military pensions. But the thing that really, really shocks me the most is the fact that they are assessing service personnel on their op pay and then refusing to adjust the figures. Mm. Then that then creates the arrears that we keep say, keep seeing. Now, obviously, Alex, you and myself have spoken an awful lot about the National Audit Office. For those right. that people, yeah, the National Audit Office are the internal auditors who go around auditing taxpayers' money. They have consistently, every single year, refused to sign off the accounts for the child maintenance service for underpayments and overpayments, which means that they're collecting money in. We're talking millions. Hundreds so, of just millions. To stop you for one second. That how many years have they been doing this, and who's why are the government officials above them not staying? What's going on? If they're they're like the the prefects of what's going on in the country with our money, and then they're, they're saying this this big problem, there's a big hole, and they're not signing off. Why are there no government officials going? Hold on a second, Mister CMS. We need to come and um, look at your books. 
Well, they are looking at their books and they're not happy. <laughs> oh, they are. Oh, yeah, but it's, uh, yeah, that's not happy. But what are they going to? Is there any accountability? None, none whatsoever. Oh, and the reason yeah. for that is, is that the civil service and the MPs are all part of this. There they're you go. all part of it. And the reason for this is, is the amount of privatisation. But we'll move on to that in a minute because yeah. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that, Chris, regarding the fact that we have men and women, yeah, because women are affected by this as well. Mm -hmm. So we have men and women who are being hounded and pursued when they are on operations. We've known of missions that have been cancelled as a result of the actions. Would you not agree that this is a detrimental effect? Sorry, that this is going to have a detrimental effect on operational capability of United Kingdom's armed forces? Well, I think we just covered it, folks, didn't we? That the um, the stress that this sort of thing can put you under is worse than facing an enemy. And I think we've all been through it in our own lives, facing bureaucracy. Um, it, it's it's traumatizing. It's bloody traumatizing, and it's so unfair. And it, well, it it can be so unfair. You're not the first person. In fact, you're actually the second person to bring this to my attention to say um, that this affects frontline operations. Um, so, uh, yes, I mean, of course, you 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 can't be focused on your job. It doesn't matter what your job is, but um, it's a national security risk. I, I think Noel told me there was a there was a fireman in the Grenfell Tower. It's a fireman not a soldier and he had to come off because he couldn't his superior officers were saying look you're just not with it he was so worried about what was going on with cms and that's so it's, it i was just going to add it although we're talking about primarily military this is a problem that is rife across the whole of our society in every shape and form it affects everybody mm. with a child who's not who's being put onto something called collect and pay and is and also collecting pay. I would say shoot me down the flames if I'm wrong. Now nine times nine times out of ten involves parental alienation. Well, I mean, look as as what kind of Chris alluded to. It it, it I I personally believe that all the family courts, child maintenance service. This has been business modelled, and it's a very very simple strategy. There's nothing complicated about it. Stop, well, it's a very simple strategy. If you stop a parent from seeing that child, that parent will do everything they possibly can to see that child. Now, we keep being told the right thing to do is go to court. Well, yeah. it costs a lot of money for you to go to court because that's the direction that you're pushed in. So if we're told to do that, yeah, because when we grow up, we go to school, we learn right from wrong. We learn that if you have a problem or someone's trying to hurt you or burgle your home, you're supposed to ring the police. Um, you know, all of these sorts of things is what we're educated, you know, as we go through life, that you're supposed to do the right thing. Yeah. And just want to add in there, two, two pence, just for, for one second. This is why we met, because I have so many people in my Bob, Brown, Bob Reed Foundation who have spent everything they have and some, and they end up in debt. And then they don't have no money to pay people like child maintenance service to see, be able to see their children. You're absolutely right. They're, they've been brainwashed in society to follow the pack, which is, all right, you, don't, you have a disagreement with your partner, you're not going to see the child, you go to court. And, it, and they've ended up in a lot worse position, nine times out of ten. Mm -hmm. I do occasionally get someone who gets a good result in court, but anyway. So if you stop one parent from seeing it's the child, the child then fundamentally is used as a weapon against the other parent. And the system supports that. And if you separate both parents, you make it very easy to set up something called child maintenance service. Yeah. Because if both parents have equal responsibility to that child, both financially and, you know, from a, a, a parental responsibility, why, is, why have a system that's there to cause conflict? Because if you have something there that's going to cause conflict, then it's going to. And it's destroying our society. It's destroying our public services. 
like I say, you know, I have police officers who are at wit's end, who are leaving the Metropolitan Police to go to other constabularies to get rid of their London waiting. The, the, the catastrophic effects that this is having on all of our service personnel, um, public services, paramedics, you name it, because we have a system that's out there that makes it so complicated to see your child. I mean, what sort of society do we live in that you have to have a bit of paper in black and white that says you can see your child under these circumstances or you can't see your child under those circumstances? You from created that child. From my investigation, I would say they're not taking children out of poverty. They're putting more children into poverty. Well, they're how so? Us- right. So let, let's, let's come back to the CMS. How does it work that you can remove a, let's say, for instance, for argument's sake, if a father cannot afford the amount of money that they are being pursued for by the CMS, how does removing that paying parent's property benefit that child? You're taking away every single thing that's going to be left to that child. The state takes that property. That paying parent will never see one penny of that property and neither will that child. So how is that giving a oh. child the best start in life? This and I mean, so I've been shouted down over this. I've been sent abuse. I have trolls who troll me. It, you know, they control me as much as that. And I'll still continue to say the same thing. What is so complicated about both parents being able to see their children and have a relationship with those children? It's absolutely crazy. And the only reason for that is is profit, which then there brings is, um, me on. No, just to clarify for those of us that aren't in the know, what who it's one thing paying child maintenance. I'm mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not getting the link between not being able to see your child. How could you explain that for us? So if both parents had equal responsibility, where applicable to that child and when i say applicable i would turn around and say if either parent is involved in uh some sort of criminality whether it from sexual offenses to rape but you know whatever it might be uh, drugs or whatever or they might they they might have mental health problems or or something like this yeah Yeah, serious serious mental health problems i mean Yeah, exactly. Because then we fall into the realms of discrimination. How can we discriminate against somebody who suffers from depression or whatever it might be? Yeah. 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 So, you know, the system's got to be fair for one Mm -hmm. and used correctly and it's got to be filtered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, without me running into the astronomical costs that um, uh, allegations, false allegations, costs and the amount of public services that get involved in that. We have a system and we've created a system that prevents parents from communicating with each other to operate in the best interests of that child. Mm. So by cutting off either parent from seeing that child, you then have uh, the ability to form a government body that then can go after, like the mafia, can go after the other parent for astronomical amounts of money that they just don't owe yeah does that does that answer the question chris yeah it does i'm still a bit uh, i'm okay just so let's just say me and alexandra we we had a child together and then for whatever reason we didn't hit it off and we we said look sayonara you know we'll go our separate ways i i i get that child maintenance would seek from the uh the parent that wasn't living with the child was like you got to contribute to that child's welfare right i get i get that bit what i'm not getting is where does the the banning from seeing the child come in um i mean i've been through because exactly this is what i'm saying because if both parents had equal responsibility for that child you would remove that conflict. 
Yeah, who who but who is stopping the parents seeing the child? This is what I don't understand. Oh, the family courts. Ah, that's I think that was the missing ingredient that left right. us all all. Can in I the... just ask you a question? Because I'm to clear something up for the layperson who might be asking the same question. Do CMS actively encourage the non res the, the non paying the resident parent, the, the parent who has the child, to but uh, if you don't go for collect and pay, which is something we haven't covered yet, if you don't go for that, you're not going to get anything. Do they actually say that? A threaten. So they, they might have two parents, me and Chris, because I'm Alexandra today. Me and Chris have got a, a child and we're, we're not getting on. But hey, that's, uh, Mate, that's nothing new for you, is it? But, as yeah, but it's not something I can really go into in too much detail here. But, okay, okay, do you know what? All right, it's fair, it's fair. I'm going to give you this much money. But uh, tell me, in your experience, Noel, are people, are CMS being influenced to create, well, hang on a minute, you're not going to get, you, you can get more money. You won't get any money off. You, if you don't do it our way, you're not going to get anything. Yeah, but I mean, you know, you're, you're, you're talking about, um, you're talking about collect and pay, which a lot of people don't know about, which is a whole separate topic, which is, you know, where they add all their collection fees on top 20%, then they take 4% from the receiving parent. But we're, I mean, that's a completely separate topic. Kind of what the uh, question what, is. I'll just I'll sum up the question. Yes, are, they will. They will act, create conflicts. Yes, they will. Are they? My question is: Are parents, resident parents of the child, actively encouraged to go to collect and pay? Absolutely. Right. That's my that's my six million dollar question, and that that is a conflict of interest, and it, it's. It's a juxtapose for the whole organisation because they're creating parental alienation, and then hey, it doesn't make sense. We, we, it's, and okay, it's so so what I'll do is I'll quickly explain this, and then we'll move on to Circo and their involvement in this. So, Chris, just so that you understand it, the CMS run two systems. Yeah, they run a collect and pay and direct pay. So, direct pay is where they make an assessment, and both parents just pay that amount of money. Yeah, between themselves. So. Um, she can have his bank details or he can have her bank details and then they just do the cross transaction. Yeah. Um, and then they run another system, which is called collect and pay and collect and pay is where the CMS will put fees on top. So whatever they assess you at, they will put 20% on top and then they will uh, deduct 4% from the receiving parent. So this is where this generates money for the CMS as well. Well, so it's in their interests to overestimate income because it would up their 20% that they're going to add on and then obviously take their. So every transaction that they made, they would be deducting 24% from the gross amount. Yeah, because it's based on your gross. So mm -hmm. monthly, whatever the gross income is of the member of the armed forces they then would remove, there would be an extra 24% on top. So in essence, they would enforce that through something called a DEO, which is your direct earnings order, which is where they would go to the Ministry of Defence direct and they would deduct the money direct and pass it on to the DWP. Does I'm going to fight that. I'm going to go to court and fight this to the hearts. Okay, that's not fair. And I showed the evidence, but what happens then? Well, I mean, there is a system that they can use, which is a very unsuccessful system, which is through the tribunals. But, I mean, it's a complete waste of time because the court orders that are made in the tribunals, they have no way of enforcing those orders. So, the so court pretty much, if we're going to start talking about, you know, separation of powers there is no separation of powers when it comes to child maintenance. Separation of powers is where we have the House of Lords, where we have the judiciary, and then obviously we have government. And neither of them are supposed to get involved with each other. They're all supposed to be separate. But how can you have the hands of the judiciary tied by the DWP, the CMS, because of the vast amount of money that is being made but like i say the horrific thing is it's in the child maintenance best interests it's in their financial interests to get that serving soldier 
who's got operational pay because his income is going to be highly inflated mm. or hers. Mm. It's going to be highly inflated. They then can put their 20, 24% on, on top. Probably nine times out of 10, the receiving parent would just probably know the basic rate that that serving soldier is taking, i.e. what's a Lance Corporal on probably 24 grand a year. So they would know that they're on 24 grand a year. But if they're on operations, their income could be up to maybe 30, 32 grand. But yeah. if that serving soldier is assessed at that time mm -hmm. that the CMS come after them when they're on ops, they look at their HMRC figure and they go for that gross figure. But that is not a true reflection of the income of whoever's serving on operations. So let's you look can at see how much stress that causes to. Can you imagine young... the amount of stress that that's causing? And you've got guys and girls who are walking around with live ammunition. You've got guys and girls who are carrying explosive devices on them, such as grenades. You've got, um, you know, I mean, that could be anybody, you know, that could be a forward observation officer who is responsible for calling in airstrikes, you know, that could affect anybody. But in their laws, they are not allowed to pursue anybody who's on operations, but they do. So how, why, why, how can, why has that not been challenged? By who? By, some, by, by anybody in all exactly. these years. Why, why exactly. not? Exactly. So what? So what, uh, essentially... Yes, uh, you are, No, You're doing a great job by the, by the sounds of things. Um, so, yeah, so essentially it's a self-serving system. The, the, the higher they can inflate this, the, these payments, the more percentage they're making out of it. And Absolutely. This, this goes back to the fact that you know, it's, a, it's all run by a private company, which am I right in saying it is... It, it, is Serco to do with this, or is that something completely separate? Right. So Serco, just so that we all know, Serco is involved in our lives on an every single day basis. That can be from refuse collection to border force to uh, the military to um, the DWP. Security. Yeah. It, it, you know, Serco cover all spectrums. Serco is heavily involved with the Tories. Yeah, there's a lot of mates sorting mates out with contracts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, Serco currently have a contract with the Home Office, which is coming in at about 2.6 billion um, for illegal immigration. That's why we were talking about illegal immigration earlier. Um, they have had the contract with um, CMS. Um, and they were ru running the Bolton office, uh, which was their enforcement side of things. So Serco were heavily, heavily involved in the collection. By their own admission, uh, we've got a um, we've got their own newsletter that they had collected one billion pounds in arrears over ten years. One billion in arrears. That is an astronomical amount of money, Chris. Yeah, without uh, going into gone. without going into the the whole whys and the wherefores, um, you know, which was covered by Alex and myself in a very detailed account of there was a debt that was created by the old CSA of three point seven nine eight billion. Cool. Yeah, that was an old debt, and that was from inflated incomes. We've got the oral hearings, the transcripts, so that money was never owed. But that money was never written off. So when the CMS took over from the CSA, they dragged this 3.798 billion across and they've been distributing it amongst paying parents. Hence the reason why the Brian Hudson report has outlined that there's approximately, on average, between, uh, can't remember the exact years, I think it was between 2018 and 2021, on average, that over a thousand and thirteen pain parents were committing suicide with those that had arrears placed on their accounts. That mm. is a massive figure, Chris. That's three parents. 
a thousand and thirteen was the average every year that was committing suicide by parents who had arrears on their accounts. It's over three a day. It's over three a day committing suicide as a result. That it's is more. genocide. That is genocide. And that's, so costing, Serco, the tax, and that's costing the taxpayer money. Mm. Of course it's costing it. Well, it costs the taxpayer 400 million a year. But Serco, oh. Serco are not the civil service. They're not bound by the civil service code. They're a corporation that are making a lot of money. Now, my question is, Chris, mm. who is all that money going to? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, can we just clarify then? So, child maintenance service. If you look on the internet, it's like a it comes across like a government office. How how, how does Circo? What could you just explain the the link there, Noel? Correlation. Right. So exactly. So it comes across that it's a government organisation. Yeah. So that's yeah. how it comes across. But it's been subcontracted. The enforcement side has been subcontracted. Ah, uh, yes, yes. This, this, yeah, it's a bit like this bloody when you get a parking ticket, isn't it? One of these crappy private parking tickets. And when you don't pay it, which I'm <laughs> not, well, <laughs> let's just say I don't give my money away to strangers for nothing. But they then palm it off, don't they? Or they then they then they then uh, contract it out to a debt collecting agency, and then they come in all heavy, threatening you with this, threatening you with that. Then the sending you actual red red letters. Um, it, it, are we talking this it's just like heavy handed scaremongering? Uh, but but with the law behind them in this case. Absolutely. So, Serco, CMS, I keep saying it, they have more enforcement powers than any government service in the United Kingdom. That's, Am I more, five? Than Am I six? that's more than security services. That's more than HMRC. They can go into the bank, into your bank account. They can take any amount of money out of there without any accountability whatsoever. No court order. They can just go in, take that money from your account. They can remove your passport. They can remove your driving license. They uh, can send you to prison, and they have sent a lot of paying parents to prison in the past. Um, they can take money directly from your wages, um, and they can also, if you have any assets, remove those assets, including your property. I mean, that is a, with no accountability at all, Chris. I heard they can take away your driving license now as well. I mean, how's that serve a paying parent who's trying to earn money if he's a driver? Yep, they remove your, your driving license, your passport, and they can send you to prison. Mm -hmm. Now, this brings me on to an MP at the moment, and I really want to get her name out there because she's supporting a bill and she's trying to get a bill pushed through um, currently at the moment, and her name is Siobhan Bailey. She is uh, a Crawley. She is the MP. She's a Tory MP for Crawley. She's heavily involved with Serco. Heavily, heavily involved with Serco. Now, when something, in my opinion, makes sense, it normally is our new reality. So Serco have lost a lot of the tagging of the prison contracts because of their poor failings. Um, they've currently been... Um, you know, they, they, they were investi investigated by City of London Police. They've had a lot of problems, Serco, in terms of their contracts. Now, she, um, this Siobhan Bailey, she was outed by um, various media where she was challenged on supporting Serco getting contracts. She denied all of that. However, the... Um, Good Law, the Good Law Society, which is run by Lawrence Fox, had a lot of documentation to say that she was pushing Serco into VIP lanes. So she's trying to push through a bill which would see 
parents who cannot afford the, the, the payments. This is what I'm saying. Nobody's on here saying that a, a mother shouldn't pay for their children or a father shouldn't pay for their children. This is not the argument here. That is not the argument here. The argument here is, is the amount of money that's been made as a result of this, Chris. And it's very important that I get that point over. And what they're willing to do to make sure that their friends keep making millions upon millions upon billions. And what they're trying to do now is make sure with a, um, another MP called Kieran Mullen, who's from Crew. Why are these MPs involved? It's got nothing to do with them. Why are they involved in child maintenance arrangements? Why are they at the forefront? Do you know why? When you follow the money is when you start finding out their affiliations to Serco. And what is it that Serco do? They tag people. So how much is that contract going to be worth? Placing parents who can't afford the assessments that they're being assessed at with nowhere to go, no recourse, no accountability. Once they get a figure dumped on them, there is nothing that they can do. Hence why the only way out is for that individual to take their own life. And that is absolutely unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. It's a system that does not work and it hasn't worked in 30 years. All it's caused is death and destruction and left a trail of destruction in its wake. Receiving parents are not receiving money. It's hundreds of millions that I keep reading in the national. On average, it's 500 million every single year that's unaccounted for. Overpayments of like 300 million, underpayments of like 200 million. This comes from the National Audit Office. They see th they see the accounts, and they are refusing every single year to sign off the accounts of the child maintenance service. And it's the same thing: errors in online data, the fact that these people cannot make simple calculations and they can't add up. And this is happening and people might be listening and thinking, well, I'm not involved with the CMS. It doesn't involve me, but it could involve your your nephews. It could involve your cousins. It could involve, um, you know, your children. It might not affect you right now, but this thing is growing and growing and growing and growing. And it's growing on an unbiblical scale. Mm. Yeah, and if people don't going start on. waking up to what's going on, as you know, as you've said, you know, you said your bit earlier, Chris, about what you believe is going on. I can't make my own personal opinions of what I think is going on. I can only speak about factual evidence because that's the role that I'm in. But I've chosen to do that. Well, here's a bit. Here's a bit of factual evidence for you. So, Serco, two of their main shareholders are company called BlackRock and a company called Vanguard. Well, mm -hmm. I would say, going back to what we... I'd say they're in the big club <laughs> because they have leading shares in... Thereabouts, folks, they're, but pretty much every single company floated on the stock market. BlackRock and, and Vanguard have leading shares in all of them, Okay. Now, that is a conflict of interest. It's a conflict of interest for all of us that two board members control the planet, basically, two people. That is that not worrying for, Very. you know, you know, the one, is, is, the, one is, thing, is, the one thing we haven't talked about, well, we have maybe vaguely, is the the lack of media, which is why we're doing this now, here and now, as I said earlier on, for evil to exist. So, sorry, man. Alex, Alex, let me let me just stop you there, because Chris has actually raised a very, very, very big point there. Mm. A huge, huge point. Right. So BlackRock Investments, absolutely, you're right. Yeah. They are a huge corporation. And I know an awful lot of black, about BlackRock Investments. So currently at the moment, there's another two companies that I know of that are involved in the child maintenance service. That's G4S and Tata, T-A, Tango Alpha, Tango Alpha. 
Guess who's shareholders of both of those companies? Have a guess. Well, it's going to be BlackRock and Vanguard. <laughs> Is exactly. It? Yeah. yeah, of course. Yes, exactly. Mm. Right. So when if we look at the avenue that the National Audit Office goes in, yeah, who does the National Audit Office report to? The Treasury. Who's got a 650,000? You can go online right now and check it. Factually check this for me right now, Chris. Who's got a £650,000 a year job with BlackRock Investments to do six hours a year for them? So that's probably, what, about £110,000 a year for an hour, for an hour's work. George Osborne. Who was George Osborne? He was the Chancellor. He mm. was the head man of the Treasury. And can we just, on that note, is... Um... Rupert Soans is the CEO of Serco, right? Yes. Uh, his brother was a member of Parliament. Nicholas Soans. So Nicholas Soans wasn't a you know wasn't uh, afraid to get in a few scandals here and there. From what I remember, was it woof, woof, woofing at women in the chamber? Which is that's his claim. Very bizarre claim to fame, but he actually woofed a, a, a fellow female member of Parliament, and it kind of made uh, made headlines back in the day, but I'm only raising it to, because I, I, I think some people are just detached from reality and uh, that doesn't seem to be a problem for for the uh, uh, for the British government. But yes, yes. So uh, again, that's what that's kind of smells a bit of nepotism, doesn't it? Well, I mean, that that's what I'm saying. The minute you start following this money tree, like I say, the 3.798 billion that's never existed. We know that that money's not existed. We have undeniable, indisputable proof. They use things like sound bites, like we're lifting children out of poverty. Mm. Really? When all that's I see, right. when all I see is hundreds of millions of pounds, hundreds of millions. You know, Chris, if I was going to sit here and I was going to say to you, do you know what? It's 10 or 20 quid, 10 or 20 quid. Then I'd say, do you know what? That's collateral damage, isn't it? 50 quid is collateral damage. But this is a money tree that brings in and generates, I mean, hundreds of millions of pounds every single year. But yet, there's still overpayments and underpayments of hundreds of millions of pounds. So receiving parents are not getting the money that they're supposed to be getting. And the overpayments is simply the fact that money's been collected from receipt uh, from paying parents mm -hmm. that should never have been collected in the first place. Then we look at chief whip. Now I don't know if this is just coincidental, Simon Clark, he is chief whip of the Conservatives. When you look at Simon Clark and you put his name into Google, guess what comes up on Company's House? Simon Clark Maintenance Limited. Yet in three years, this man has never shown a set of accounts. Keeps closing a company down and then opening another company. He has never shown. If I did that, I would be arrested for money laundering. Mm. I would be arrested for fraud. You would so be struck you off. You would be put into the local gazette and your company would be struck off. How is I this? Could, I could tell you how. This is the question. This is the elephant in the room, which is in society. He who controls the media controls the world. We, we hear slogans like deadbeat dads and you, you three and a half million not being paid we've recovered this we're doing this great job that these people are getting away because what guess what they control the media which is why i i like to think there is and there's definitely as i started off the whole podcast more people they, they trust governments less and less and they're not even most conspiracy theories have come come true um I'm not saying I'm wearing a tin hat and with aliens and stuff and lizards and all that, but so many of the things that people are, it's dumbed down. Oh, you're just a crazy conspiracy theorist. 
uh, purposely by the big the big media. But there's the, which is why we've come here. Thank you, Chris, because there is enough people now who are watching these shows and they're growing. We need to grow bigger and bigger. And what's the next step for us to to, to change this tyranny, Noel? Just be, I mean, look, just before we move on to that, um, there's just somebody else that I wanted to bring into the mix very quickly here uh, is a charity, a so-called charity called Gingerbread. Yeah. Oh, God. Mm. Yeah. And Gingerbread is the charity of uh, resident parents. And Gingerbread are responsible for major, major league dishonesty because they've been promoting, they were present at the oral hearings when they knew 3.798 billion never existed, but yet they've continuously pumped out through the media that the 3.798 billion is owed by feckless fathers. As Alex was alluding to, there's sound bites. Yeah, we go after deadbeat dads. Well, I can tell you what, you're absolutely right. These dads are dead. <laughs> That's not funny. Uh, and I'm not, and I'm, I'm not, uh, there is no smirk on my face when I say no. that. You are looking, if you look at over a 30 year period, if roughly you are talking about a thousand suicides a year, you are probably looking at 30,000 paying parents that have committed suicide. Veterans that I know of, such as Ian Briggs, whose father, uh, sorry, who is the father of a veteran who was in the RAF for, I, th I believe, 15, 12 to 15 years. He was in the RAF. Gavin, beautiful young man, had his income inflated by £26,500. He was given £15,000 of arrears. He took his own life. Do you know what he did? He, he took his own life um, with, by using uh, he, he, uh, carbon monoxide poisoned himself mm. because he physically could not cope with the stress that these people were putting on putting on him 26 and a half thousand pounds is he was a train driver his income was inflated to something like seventy six thousand pounds do you think ian's been able to get any answers or any justice no went to the coroner's court nothing to do with the cms wouldn't even hear the evidence yeah in a public forum wouldn't even hear the evidence. We've got Johnny O'Neill, another father who's committed suicide as a result of these people because of the vast amounts of money. They left him with nothing. They were cleaning out his bank account. They were taking all of his money from um, DEOs, took his own life. Do you think his sister Joanne has been able to get any justice at all? None whatsoever. Nothing. How is this... And, you know, the thing is that upsets me the most about this, Chris, we believe that we were defending democracy. We believe that we were defending um, fairness, equality, all of these things. I thoroughly, I'm a firm believer in equality, but it's got to be equality for all. Regardless of your race, re regardless of your religion, regardless of whether you're a man, woman, I only believe in inequality. But it's got to be equality. And if you're going to pump it out there that we are this country of equality and diversity and stuff like, no, we're not. That's a soundbite from the government. Those are just sound bites. There's no equality in society at all. None whatsoever. And these are all the things that I joined the military for because I believed in these things. And the more and more that I've gone through life. I've got into this, the part I'm, I'm seeing things that outrage me and absolutely disgust me on every single level. And I think to myself, I've, 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 I said, I did an interview with Anne Widdicombe, wonderful woman, absolutely pure, she's so pure, Anne Widdicombe. And I sat in front of her mm. and I said to her, my exact words were to her, men and women have dodged bullets and bombs for this yes yes we can, we can say the same for the last <laughs> two and a half years um it's they uh, are traitors they are traitors they will do anything to make their millions at any human cost whatsoever 
they will do whatever it takes. The child maintenance service has got blood on its hands. It's ridden with corruption and poison. Ridden with it. And these people need to be held to account. The police will do nothing about it. The serious fraud office will do nothing about it. The police, I, I, I mean, I have massive respect for police officers because of what they do on a daily basis. But when these parents are contacting the police, the police are saying it's nothing to do with us, it's civil matter. They are duty bound, legally bound to investigate any form of legislation. That is a police officer's job. Yet they are, to, when a parent rings them and says, I've had theft from my account. I don't owe this money. Sorry, it's nothing to do with us. It's a civil matter. How can theft, how can misconduct in the public office, possibly even manslaughter, how can these things be a civil matter, Chris? Okay, so, yeah, no, uh, Rupert Soames apparently stepped down, has recently stepped down from Serco, and they're saying he made £30 million in the eight years that he was the governor there. Um, where's that 30 million come from? Well, it comes from the British taxpayer or all the, uh, <laughs> the vulnerable individuals that we've just mentioned. I really do hope out of this podcast, Chris, that the people who are listening to this podcast really take notice of what we've said today, because this is just the tip of the iceberg. You know, when we start talking about net zero and all of these things, you know, everything that's going on in society, we're all paying for. And as I've said, we've got the child maintenance service. It's not worked in 30 years. Yet it's cost costing the British taxpayer between 300 to 400 million a year. That's what it costs to run it. Between three to 400 million pounds a year for a system that it just does not work. Is there any mm. way of finding, getting the accountability of finding who is profiting and shining a torch and then being imprisoned. For the only way that you're going to do that is the police to investigate it because we have no idea where the money's been siphoned to. So Simon Clark, that? Simon Clark, there you go, an MP. Why has he not been investigated by HMRC? You're opening and closing down companies. Chief Whip of the, of the Tories. If you've done it, Alex, if you've done it, Chris... You'd have HMRC all over you. You probably have the Vatman all over you. Hold on a sec. Let me just. Uh, I. You could maybe remind me a bit better, but wasn't the same? The, a much more worse problem in, this, in the Holland Dutch government, and the whole Dutch government resigned a couple of years ago because of what's going on in their CMS. I, I, I mean, look, I, I, I can't speak about what happens, you know, with the Dutch government. I can only speak about, you know, what we, you know, what we've got going on here, but. You know, the fact of the matter is, is that we have the civil service, we have MPs who are completely unaccountable. The police are supposed to be independent. They are supposed to help us. They are supposed to be there when you need them. The same well, way that Rishi Sunak needs the military to bail him out of all of these strikes that are coming our way. You know, we've got soldiers that have been trained in airports now. We've got soldiers who are looking like they're going to have to drive fire engines, you know, green goddesses and all that. But at no time does Rishi Sunak think to himself, hmm, I'm going to ask the military to do all of these things for me, but what is it that we give back to these people? Yeah, but we should make it clear because there'll be people listening now that, that won't understand this. Rishi Sunak doesn't work for us. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. For, oh, a no. for a start, he's got a, a, a almost a 1% share in a multi-billion dollar company called Infosys. That means that his residual income alone from that company is actually his wife's uh, father that founded it. It's an Indian company. Uh, that means his residual income alone from that is like 700 million a year. This, this will come as no surprise as, as why he's a member of the world economic forum. And so is her father. In, incidentally, um, we also need to highlight Serco. If I got this correctly, they were paid 700 
million of our money, the people watching, our taxpayers, to uh, run the, uh, <clears throat> if I say the testing centres for the last couple of years. You know, this is this is fraud on such a massive level that I, I, I don't think the vast majority of people out there can really comprehend. Uh, and and I mean, the last two and a half years, most people can't comprehend. Sadly, veterans being amongst them, but. I, I guess we can gr congratulate those veterans that are awake, awake to to this crime, and that stand by their oath and and stand. I always say, stand by the children because the children are going to inherit this shit show, and it's 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 bad enough as it is. It, it's just going to get worse, and and you can tie. I mean, we're we're just talking about one incidents here or one one you know focal point you can add to that the damage that social media is doing to our youngsters mm. and they actually uh, the the um says a guy who's on all social media platforms you know uh, <laughs> for my for my business i should say folks mm. if you think i'd go on tiktok or twitter I don't even Facebook. You you're at you were literally having a laugh. It it's 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 society in the gutter, if you ask me. It's society in the gutter. I, I and Chris, uh, I'm very sad. You know, I'm I'm very very sad to hear that. I mean, you know, I I take no pleasure in coming on to this podcast today. No pleasure whatsoever. And in coming on here and highlighting the truth, because I only work from truth and evidence, and it makes me incredibly sad. In fact, you know, there, there has been nights where I've read cases of where predominantly fathers, and it is predominantly fathers, and mothers do get caught up in this as well, and this is not, a, this is not about gender. And I have sat here where tears have come to my eyes because I have looked at this trail of destruction with no accountability. Mm. You know, there was, there was, there, you know, I, I, I've got, on, I've, I have got to know Ian Briggs over a matter of time. I mean, I'm literally the only person that he can talk to who's got a voice where he can talk to me and I'm trying to get his son justice. You know, as, as I've said in previous podcasts, the income that was inflated was um, off the top of my head. I think it was about 76 grand. I mean, this was a train driver, Chris. Mm. Surely somebody, you know, with even a, a teaspoon of a brain cell would know that a train technician, he's a train mechanic, does not earn 76,000 pounds a year. You know, the sort of people that earn that sort of money are MPs, surgeons, and people like that. It's an astronomical amount of money, 76 grand a year. And he mm. had his income inflated to this and then was given 15,000 pounds of arrears. We also have the deletion of case files by the CMS as well, which is highly illegal. Over an 18-month period, they deleted case files. Mm. Where, where is the accountability for that? Any financial company, any financial corporation that's out there, I believe that they have to hold that data for a minimum of 10 years. They cannot even get accredited by the FCA unless they have the ability to be able to store that data in archives for a minimum period of 10 years. Mm. So how can the CMS, which is a government body, been able, and that's been highlighted in the National Audit Office, they were furious, furious that they'd been deleting case files over an 18-month period. Now, one would have to ask the question, why have they done that? I can tell you why I believe it is. I don't have any evidence, but my gut feeling 
is that the reason why they've done that is to cover up their crimes. That's usually the reason behind deleting evidence, isn't it? Is to, is to yes. Um, can we just say, I'm just going to step in here, folks, because it, 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 it's like I feel people's pain. You know, I really do. Um, if there is anybody watching now and this kind of thing is affecting you or something si similar, please, as, as horrible and unfair as it is, remember, like, this doesn't define you. And money is nothing. And my my old adage is if you can sit in the back garden with a bit of sun on your face, that's all you need in life. That mm. really it that really is. Even if it's raining, a bit of rain, you know, if you've got if you can live and you can breathe, you're doing an awful lot better than all of our oppos that died in horrific circumstances in conflict or coming off their motorbikes or whatever it might be and please i know it's easy to say but please don't you've got to compartmentalize this and just put it to the side i know i know you still got to deal with this this sort of thing but uh please don't be um you know don't be considering to taking yourself out of the game because that, well, that ain't going to help your children for a start, is it? You've then got to live with that for the rest of their life. It ain't worth it. It's just a fucking load of bullshit. Excuse my French, but that's what it is. It's horrible. It's nasty. It's the world that people have just sat back and allowed to be, to, to, to create, um, Keep smiling, folks. It's n it's not not worth letting this get you down. You know, money can be replaced. It just can. As unfair as this is, uh, it, it 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 doesn't define you. And so, it's so fell tricky though, Chris, because I mean, both me and I have both been there. We've considered mm. doing something silly ourselves, and I know I can't speak for Noel, but for myself, that that selfish to our children who were trying to help they need us yeah uh, uh, but it but it still doesn't stop the horrendous shit which is being thrown at you and you're like your lack of self worth you i i love your sentiment money mm. isn't everything um but the it's just the challenge of ha having finding support just finding someone else maybe going through the same reach out to yeah. us at the bob reed foundation reach out to you chris you've got um any well, connection Alex, it's it's really important people understand that you are loved massively. And the way society set up is, is to make you feel that you're not and that you're worthless. That is how these these uh, parasites operate. Mm -hmm. But you are. If you're going for a challenge now, whatever the challenge might be, there's three people here that love you. And I know I speak for Mark. You know, I speak for my subscribers. We're a good old community here, but we say it as it is. You know, mm -hmm. you are massively loved. Uh, don't ever, ever forget that. And hardship is only ever temporary, folks. You know, it's only ever temporary and nothing is worth taking yourself out of the game for. It's not, but I do appreciate that the, the, the isolation and the loneliness and the the lack of um, feeling that they've got anything to come back with that people, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, dismiss that. Um, fellas, that said, where are we going with this? We can do a follow-up podcast. It, it's a bit hard to galvanize people because, you know, it's what galvanizing for what, to what, uh, you know, people can't even be asked to get off their backsides to stop these psychopaths. You know, uh, I'm just going to say putting their children through certain procedures. Um, it, what, what, 
What's our options here, folks? You know. Sorry, Chris. Just uh, mm. just to reiterate, just literally, just what you said. Um, if anybody is experiencing uh, the, the the problems, you know, that we've highlighted in this podcast, um, I strongly urge them to get themselves onto child support agency ripoffs. Um, you know, there, there, there's a lot of help on there you know, with certain things to do. There's a lot of support on there. Uh, they'll get a lot of love. Um, Where can you from, find them? No? On Facebook. On Facebook. Uh, so if anybody goes into their search bar, um, they can go into child support agency ripoffs. Um, there's there's a lot of people in there who can offer a lot of love, a lot of support. Unfortunately, I can't get involved in individual cases because um <laughs> If I was going to get involved with every single individual case, I, I would never be able to do this sort of work. Do you see yeah. what I mean? Yeah, where, where people understand the, yeah. that, mate. People understand yeah. that. And if people like the sort of stuff that I'm doing, you know, they 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 like the sort of stuff that Reform is doing, what we're speaking about, you know, uh, people can give me a follow, which is Noel Wilcox Reform UK, um, you know, on my socials where, you know, I speak about policy uh, where we're going as a uh, as a country, you know, where we're heading, um, you know, where the direction that we're heading in, and I really think that when you asked me at the beginning with regards to reform, our, our leader Richard Tice, he's very pure, he cares, and he's very very pure. And Nigel Farage, regardless of what the media has said about him and stuff like that, yet again, he's very very pure, and it's an easy it's an easy cop out for them to keep saying, oh, you know, we're a, we're a, a, an extreme right wing. I'll tell you one thing, we are right, and we are right in what we're saying. What is it that people want? People want a few quid in their pocket. People want, you know, less crime. They want to know that their children are safe going to nightclubs and stuff like that. We want our borders secure. It's not a lot to ask for. No. And, and I'm just going to reiterate again, until people understand the agenda that we're under, it's never going to happen, unfortunately. Um, we can petition the government as much as we like. They, they, their job is not to suit to serve us. <laughs> their job is to serve their controllers, and they they do it very very well. Um, and they've done a, an increasingly better job o over the last four hundred years. Uh, and once you see it, you can't put like the cat back in the box or whatever the expression is. Once you see, once you see it, you see it, you see the world economic forum, you, you see the players, you see their utter nonsense rhetoric. Um, they're ready to start implanting chips in people's brains and other such utter cretinous nonsense before they've even talked about the spiritual battle. Um, hello. Well, why don't we like start with the basics and get children growing up with love for each other mm -hmm. rather than growing up in this endless competition where it's the point where they get to adult, old adulthood, you know, the only options available are to desecrate their body with tattoos and piercings and da, 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 not folks. We've all got tattoos. We're not having a go at you, but, but we're just saying we've been taken so far away from our beautiful sovereign spiritual self where People love one another. That's clear. Anyone that's traveled anywhere will tell you the hospitality you meet when you travel to other countries um, or you travel, you know, from the south up to the north. People love each other. So what is going on here? Well, what's going on is is the parasites don't want you to know that. They don't want you to understand the basics. They don't want children educated in schools that if your mate's crying, don't laugh at him and think, <laughs> I'm going to get a better test result. Go up and put your arm around him and he will do the same for you when you're struggling. Um, we, we need to get our heads around this. Not quite sure how we're going to do it. It's possibly even egotistical of me to think that it's possible. Maybe that's, maybe I'm, I got some work on my, my spiritual battle, but I do think that, you got to sort of stand up for something. I think history has shown us that the, the crazy people who think they can change the world, change it. Yeah. Good. Good. All right, folks, Shut on it. that note, 
No, you've been absolutely excellent, mate. Uh, uh, I congratulate you on your fight. I can see um, your passion for people. I can also feel your frustrations, brother, you know? Um, absolutely. Alex, as always, you're a legend. And I know that this has affected you you personally. Let's 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 put this one out there and let it breathe. Mm-hmm. And then we'll do we'll do a live chat and we'll let Definitely. people we'll let people in the chat ask us questions and you know they can put their experiences to us. Possibly they'll hopefully not, but I'm, I'm guessing that they 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 likewise will have woes. It is an unfair. I'm always dealing with at least two emails in my inbox of people, Chris, I'm fighting to see my child at the moment or I'm, f- and it's, and uh, it's not veterans don't always make it easy on themselves because veterans are quite immature in there in a, or can be. Um, we, we can be quite reactive and, and, and um, entitled, uh, uh, I guess you could say. So uh, anyway, a live show could be an interesting one is what I'm trying to say. Uh, no, you're going to send me all the links that you want below this video. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, if you just send that to me in a, in a little paragraph, we'll, we'll put them below and uh, big love to you fellas and massive love to everybody else out there. Please like, and subscribe folks. Cause you're not really going to hear this sort of thing anywhere else on the planet. Are you um, except from these two good people? Ciao, ciao. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you.